Hey there, welcome back to a brand new devlog. I'm Annie and I'm building a fun little train game called On Trek. And of course, I am doing so very expertly. So in this video, we'll take a look at a central part of my game architecture, the event system. And if you're just starting out in game dev yourself, maybe this devlog will provide a little bit of inspiration for how you can set up events in your own game. Anyway, in case you're new here, welcome and let's get you up to speed. Here's how OnTrack works. You operate the railway switches to direct the trains to depots. The train color matches the depot color, you get a point. It doesn't, you lose a life. All your lives are gone, you lose the level, game over. So right from the start, I've been quite the expert using scriptable objects along with Unity events for my event architecture, which is actually a really neat way for teams to organize their code and to make it possible for non-programmers, like for example, designers, to also modify game functionality. However, I am not a designer and I'm also not a team. So all the dragging and dropping in the Unity editor, which is probably great for bigger teams, quickly became pretty annoying for myself. In my last devlog, I set out to make my gameplay more fun and added what I call goodies to my game. As an example, the emergency brake goodie will stop all trains for a few seconds so that you have some extra time to reorganize if necessary. Anyway, to implement this new feature, I needed a lot of new events and I ended up in drag and drop hell. So over the past few weeks, I did a bit of research and some expert thinking, of course. And I decided to come up with my own little event system that just does everything in code. So there are a lot of different ways in which you could implement an event system in your Unity game. Mostly they vary in how robust, flexible and complex they are. So for example, if you go for a more flexible and robust solution, that is likely to also be a bit more complex. I've been thinking I could actually do a video on this. So I would go over some actual implementations, go over the use cases, pros and cons. So let me know down in the comments if you'd be interested in that. Okay, so let's take a look at the system I implemented for on track. The central part of my event system is an events class that simply holds all my events and nothing else actually. Here's what this class looks like. Note that it is static and that it doesn't inherit from mono behavior. That means it'll always be available no matter which scene is loaded and there will only ever be a single one of it. Also note that all the events are read only, which provides a bit of extra safety by ensuring that other classes can't accidentally reassign the event fields, even though they're public. So let's take a look at the event class itself. This is actually just a simple wrapper class that holds a single c -sharp event and implements functions to invoke the event and to add or remove listeners. So that is really just a couple lines of code. Importantly, I use native c -sharp delegates and events now, so no more dragging and dropping. If I wanted to, I could now easily extend this class, for example, with additional log messages or safety checks. A possible safety check could be to ensure that a listener can only be added to an event once. So how do we use this in code? To invoke an event, a class can just, well, invoke it. Since the events class and all its members are static, we don't even need to find an instance of it. And on the listener side, a class can simply add a delegate function to an event that will be executed whenever the event is invoked. We also need to remove listeners to avoid memory leaks. And with that, we can complete the diagram. But you may have noticed this event class doesn't allow you to pass any parameters in your event. That is of course an unacceptable limitation for an expert game dev like myself. So I also have a templated version of the event class that allows you to pass a parameter of any type in your event. In my static events class, this is how I declare such events. And here's how I invoke them. So what about you? Do you have a dedicated event system in your own game? And if so, what kind of solution did you go with? 
By the way, maybe you've noticed that I don't strictly need the big central events class and could also just keep my events in the classes that invoke them. But I like having this nice and orderly event registry as an overview. Also, my listeners don't need to know anything about the object that is invoking the event and it's a bit more flexible as I can more easily change from which location an event is invoked. And a last side note, I could implement a way to pass multiple parameters in events, but so far I don't need it, so I'm happy to just not make my system more complex just to add flexibility that I don't really need. All right, I think that was the most technical devlog I've done so far. I hope you found it interesting as well and maybe even learned a thing or two on your own way to becoming a game dev expert. Anyway, I personally really enjoy digging into these game architecture questions and figuring out a good solution for my own use case. But also in the meantime, I've been hard at work on a bunch of cool new features that I'm excited to show you. So keep an eye out for my next devlog and until then, thanks for watching.